Today I'm going to tell you the heartbreaking story of a typical Meniere's disease patient. I don't know if you know this, but for most Meniere's patients, their quality of life is really similar to someone with terminal cancer, AIDS, Alzheimer's, COPD. And I know that sounds uh, shocking, but if you have Meniere's and you've suffered you know, these vertigo attacks and the hearing loss and the tinnitus, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I want to take a few minutes today to explain why it is like that so you can understand if you're a partner or a spouse about why someone in your life with Meniere's disease is suffering so badly. But I'm also going to explain how you can avoid that path of having a quality of life that is similar to those terrible conditions I just mentioned. So let's get into that. So Meniere's disease is often called endolymphatic high drops. We're not going to get a lot into the physiology today, but essentially what happens is your inner ear gets crushed from the inside out due to uh, fluid pressure. Uh, and, and in my opinion, the, most people that have Meniere's disease really have an immune system problem that's driving that. But what it produces is symptoms such as the following. They get uh, episodes, unpredictable episodes, of vertigo attacks. And these attacks can be debilitating. Uh, they get tinnitus that can last after the attacks. They get hearing loss. Uh, and it doesn't just have to be one ear. It can be get, become both ears. And here's the thing about Meniere's that makes the quality of life so bad. Number one, it's debilitating, but it's unpredictable. Uh, the patients that see me, that I've seen you know, many over the years, what is the most frustrating for them is that they don't know when the attacks are coming. You know, I've made other videos about, you know, triggers for attacks like, you know, salt and sugar and that kind of stuff. But even for, even taking those into account, most people still don't know when the attacks are going to come. Uh, they can happen when they're driving. They can happen when they're at the grocery store. They can happen when they're just sitting, you know, watching TV. And that makes them feel incredibly powerless. It also makes them feel obviously very frustrated. Now, the frustration obviously comes from the fact that they don't know when these things are coming and they're told that there's not much they can do about it, right? So most Meniere's patients will start with uh, some kind of ear symptom, right? It's usually like an ear fullness or maybe a little muffled, uh, maybe a slight amount of hearing loss or tinnitus. And then over time, uh, that worsens and then eventually they get some type of vertigo attack, right? Spinning, the room is spinning, it can be so bad they're vomiting and, and these attacks can last for a minute or days. Uh, I've certainly had patients in my practice over the last 20 years that have attacks so bad that they're debilitated for days. I, I have had a, a recent patient uh, who's a mail carrier and his attacks were so bad and so unpredictable that he'd be out on a route and he'd have an attack and he'd have to call the office and say, hey, someone's going to have to come and relieve me because I can't walk and I can't drive. I mean, just think about that for a second. Uh, those attacks are so debilitating. Now listen, they're debilitating. And what I mean by that is you cannot do anything but be in the attack and suffer it. Uh, you can't just like tough it out and like, you know, mind over matter. That's not the way it works. So if you can think about that for a second, that's why this condition is so uh, hellish. I mean, it's what makes someone with Meniere's disease has a, have such a, a terrible quality of life. But they, you know, you get the attack and that usually triggers uh, some uh, visit to an ENT or primary care. And sometimes you'll get a, a VNG test or a hearing test. And Usually if you've got hearing loss, uh, tinnitus, and some type of vertigo or dizziness, you're probably going to get diagnosed with Meniere's disease. But that is kind of where I start having some problems, me personally, uh, with how Meniere's disease is handled. Uh, most people with Meniere's are told low sodium diet, take a diuretic. Uh, if you're lucky, maybe you'll get beta histine, although that doesn't work most of the time. And that's pretty much it. Uh, most people are told that's all you can do. Now, sometimes you'll get like steroid injections in the ear. Sometimes they'll take oral steroids, but you can't just keep doing that four or five times a year because the steroids are bad for you in the long term. So, of course, people with Meniere's start feeling like they have no power, right? And, you know, the thing about Meniere's is, is that it's not a life-threatening condition, but it is a, uh, a world-threatening condition, right? Like it's not going to kill you, but it'll make, you, it'll make you feel like there's no reason to live sometimes. I've certainly had uh, my share of patients that have had uh, really, really bad mood uh, disorders because of the Meniere's. I mean, the research shows that about 63% of people with Meniere's have anxiety or depression. And that's not surprising, right? Like if you had what I described so far, unpredictable attacks, a debilitating vertigo that can give you nausea and vertigo, chronic tinnitus that you can't ignore, chronic instability and chronic balance problems and hearing loss. I mean, yeah, you'd have anxiety and depression as well. So I made the video today to try to help some of you understand why the person in your life uh, suffers so badly with mirrors, if you didn't already know. And I also made it to try to give you a little bit of a ray of hope because 
Even though Meniere's patients do, according to the research, especially when they've had an attack, have a quality of life like someone with terminal cancer, AIDS, Alzheimer's, COPD, it doesn't have to be that way. Now, I've made a lot of videos on my channel about kind of how I approach Meniere's disease and kind of like my, uh, kind of like what I do. And I'm not really going to do that again today, but I just want to let you know that there are things you can do. Like for me, and the vast majority of people that make it to my practice, it's something going on with their immune system. And one of the reasons we know that is if you take steroids and your symptoms get better, guess what? That's telling you it's your immune system. Now, it doesn't tell you what specifically is going on with your immune system. And that, of course, is a, you got to find someone who's going to dig and find that out. Sometimes it's an autoimmune problem, not in the ear, but outside the ear. Sometimes it's an inflammatory problem caused by blood sugar. Sometimes it's, I mean, there's so many different phenotypes. You really have to work with someone that is going to do more, in my opinion, than just say low salt diet and diuretic. Now, I don't really fault a lot of the doctors that are doing that because, you know, frankly, they're in an insurance model. They don't really have a lot of time uh, to be spending with people and, and to come up with like customized treatment plans, right? They're pretty much going to do what seems to work or what they think is going to work. Uh, but you just got to know that there's more and more research coming out every day. Uh, and I'm going to put out some other videos about this. And one of the things I think is a really a uh, good model to explain what's going on on a Meniere's is something called the leaky ear. Now you may have heard of leaky gut. Uh, we're not going to talk about leaky ear too much today, but the point is it's the immune system. Now in my office, I like to do what's called multiple tissue antibody testing. I like to do uh, lymphocyte immunophenotyping testing because it's really important to take each Meniere's case on its own merits, right? So just because you've been diagnosed with Meniere's and you have uh, episodic attacks of vertigo and nausea and tinnitus and hearing loss, it does not mean that what's causing that in you is the same as what's causing it in this other person over here, right? You're two different people. And the reason I say that is because, you know, we all have our own fingerprints, right? Like you and me, we have arms and eyes, and, you know, human parts, but we all have our own fingerprint. Well, that's the same thing going on with the immune system. We've all got T cells and B cells and natural killer cells and lymphocytes, but our phenotype, you know, what our immune system looks like, our fingerprint is different, even if we have the same diagnosis. And that's really what I think you need to be looking for is someone who understands that whole concept, uh, understands that there's more to treating Meniere's than just episodic steroids, low salt diet, and diuretics. Uh, again, most of the people that make it to me, and maybe you're one of these people, if you're still having fluctuating hearing loss or worsening hearing loss, and you're still having episodic attacks, your Meniere's isn't stable. And whatever you're doing, uh, it really isn't working to keep it stable. So I'm going to encourage you to work with someone that understands all these things that we've talked about today. You don't have to end up <laughs> with the quality of life like someone who has terminal cancer, Alzheimer's, COPD, uh, or AIDS. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. But you're going to have to do some things probably a little bit differently than what you've been doing. So please start looking for a doctor that understands some of the things we've talked about today. And even though, you know, it's a heartbreaking story, and I say heartbreaking because people give up their hobbies, they give up their social life, they uh, give up driving, sometimes they have to quit their job. I find that heartbreaking. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, you can do things despite what well-meaning doctors are telling you to improve your Meniere's, to make it stable so that you can, uh, maybe you're not going to be symptom free for the rest of your life, but you're going to have a heck of a lot more good days than bad. And you can actually have a quality of life that's good and fulfilling. Uh, and not the terrible quality of life that so many people have. So I hope you found this helpful, uh, and I'll see you next time.